Well, it's an act of submission. It is. It's it an is. act of dog training. That, that I mean, in Nazi Germany, line up, let us see your papers. Now it's line up, we're going to naked body scan you. And it got worse in Nazi Germany. They line up, let us shoot you. Uh, but it is conditioning. They got the population used to it. They think they need it, and they don't. I lived that life. I know we don't need that. I know our generation is no more violent than the previous. And I want the, if we're not working. But if a killer is going to go in, they're going to go shoot through the guards. I mean, it's not going to stop anybody to put naked body scanners in shopping malls, which they're now saying is next. Well, you know, and then they make exceptions for people. OK, I can go down and get a little card where I don't have to go through it. And so can a lot of other people. So uh, how are they? You know, it, it's a two tier system. We treat some people better like royalty than we do the common citizen. Okay, they have to go through the, the scanners, whereas the judges and the prosecutors and the cops and, and the defense attorneys and others with special privileges get to go, go walk right past it. And that is not right. So it's discrimination. It everyone, it's discrimination. It at all, you need to do it to everyone. Because that's the only way you're going to ensure no one's really carrying. Because, hell, they could, give, they could give me one of their little passes, and then I go nuts. Okay. So I, what good is the pass to save or protect people in the courthouse if uh, uh, I decide I'm going to go in and shoot the place up after I get the little badge? Who watches the watchers? No one's watching them. I could tell you there's absolutely no one making sure a judge puts in an eight-hour day. Uh, there's no oversight over many government people. Um, let's shift gears now, unless you've got more to add on that. No. With what happened at the, at the Saxet Gun Show... Uh, what, six months ago or so, what has unfolded since then and how they were able to extrajudicially threaten the leaseholder into shutting this down. And now they've sent a Vietnam veteran, a patriot, a guy with, you know, uh, an upstanding, you know, record to prison. He's going to prison for six months in a federal work camp. Uh, let's go through this. All right. Well, I think the important thing is that, that people need to get the word out that uh, this could happen to them. Okay, this could happen to any of us. Uh, what happened was this gentleman, this Vietnam veteran, uh, sold a gun to a, an individual who had a Texas driver's license, who neg negotiated the sale of this firearm, and uh, then it turns out, well, he's an illegal alien. And he passes the gun off to his friend, who's also an illegal alien. Well... Uh, how are you supposed to know? How is a citizen supposed to know that the person standing in front of them is an illegal alien? And, there, and the answer is there is no way to know. The peace officer at the front door of the gun show is not even allowed to ask. And that's what the lawsuit in Arizona is about. They don't want peace officers asking people they pull over on traffic stops if they're in the country illegally. Yet the citizen selling a gun from his private collection is some, supposed to just somehow know. There's also a lot of public ignorance. You might cover that. The media calls it the gun show loophole. No, it's a grandpa no, it's can not. give his 14-year-old a 22. You can sell your uh, neighbor a 700 Magnum. It's called the private transfer. Okay, In the 68 Gun Control Act, which, by the way, was based on Hitler's statute on guns, um, so it's... It's a sad comment on American law, but it's on the... The late Senator Dodd admitted that. He'd been in the Nuremberg trial. Well, he, we know he checked out the uh, Hitler's laws from the Library of Congress and had them translated. A while, and then shortly thereafter introduced the 68 gun control. Now, my memory says, though, he was involved in the Nuremberg, correct? Yes, he was a prosecutor there as okay, well. Okay, <clears> okay. <throat> uh, but long, anyway, back to this case. This is a travesty of justice. Uh, what they did was they prosecuted this man for knowingly selling to an illegal alien. But at the trial, they admitted, oh, well, yeah, he really didn't know, but he should have known. And the law is, is that the actual wording of the statute says is that you shall not sell a firearm to someone you had reasonable cause to believe was in the country illegally. And that's what they argued to this jury. They said, well, he should have known that this was an illegal alien. Because Why? Well, because of the way they walked and talked. Because they were, they looked like Mexicans. They were Hispanic. They spoke Spanish and English too, by the way. And they wore cowboy clothing. That's what they did. To that's what they talked this jury into. This jury, which boggles my mind. Uh, yeah, they wore cowboy clothing because that's where the cowboys came from. Mexicans are the real cowboys. 
That's where the whole style came from. But, but I, I mean, that's amazing that in uh, Arizona, the feds are filing two lawsuits. Right. They've gone to the U.N. They're saying a police pull over a drunk driver and they're wearing a cowboy outfit. They don't speak English. They don't have an I.D. You take them to jail. But now they're saying, oh, as a citizen, even if somebody's got an I.D., is posing as a citizen, we're going to send you to prison uh, if you sell them a gun. Yes, that's what they did to this man. Now, there's no good reason to do this other than to scare us citizens into not selling our firearms, not going to gun shows. As I see it, that's what it's really about because it's the government who caused this problem because they've allowed millions of people to enter the country illegally. And then they have a law in the book that says you can't sell to these people. And they give you no method to determine who's who. And they give them a driver's license. And they give them a driver's license, yes. Now, what's really going to infuriate you is the individual he sold the gun to with the driver's license. Nothing happened to him. He is, we just checked yesterday, he's still living in Austin, apparently still has his job, still has his Texas driver's license. He committed three distinct federal crimes. He purchased the gun, knowing he was an illegal alien. He possessed the gun, knowing he was an illegal alien. And then he transferred the gun to another illegal alien, okay? And he's not been prosecuted for any. So now we have selective enforcement, more discrimination. Yeah. But here's a $64 million question. The intel I got from the victim and from people at the show is that they were running stings and that this appeared to be a staged event, that it was under surveillance. Do we know for a fact or do we have any evidence that, I mean, we know they've let him go, haven't prosecuted the illegal alien. We know he's above the law now, that this was a setup. I don't know of any other rational conclusion you could make based on what we do know. Now, I have no direct evidence that they're working with the guy, but I will tell you it's common. They don't lock up the narc. They let the narc somehow gets out of jail the next day. Isn't that, isn't that well, we know this is part of a larger federal strategy, and the Austin Police Department admitted this to the news, uh, the statesman and others, that the feds are coming in pressuring them to, quote, shut down gun shows uh, outside of the law. And they're also at the Justice Department level using uh, the, uh, the collapse of Mexico and the drug war down there to claim that guns from Texas, Arizona, California, New Mexico are causing, as this is part of a larger strategic operation, though the actual studies show close to 90 percent are being bought by the gangs directly from the military, yeah. and most of them aren't U.S., they're German. That's where the Mexicans buy most of their helicopters and guns and machine guns and vehicles, so that's not even true either. Now, there are some Mexicans that come by guns because they've been debarred the right to self-defense to protect themselves in Mexico. And quite frankly, I'm all for the Mexican people having guns. Yes, it's, it's amazing. If you've ever been down to El Paso, you can see across the border from downtown El Paso, and you can see this imaginary political boundary. On one side, there's this prosperity, huge buildings, clean, beautiful city. On the other side is this dump. And, and it's all because of your political structure. It, it's an imaginary line. Yet it's, it's stark contrast from one side to the other. And on one side, citizens are allowed to own guns and there's peace and tranquility. On the other side, they're not and there's mayhem and murder. It's, it's literal road warrior. It is, it is out of control. I, you go on the Internet and pull up any of those. That's not even the word. I was looking at news yesterday. Of they go into nightclubs and cut everybody's heads off, and it was all these men with their heads cut off in the nightclub, and they and they take children and murder them. They grab the Latin American immigrants coming in, the Mexicans do, and they kill them. And when good police try to investigate, the police come and kill them. They're killing mayors almost every day. There's rocket attacks. Now it's 28,000 deaths in the last couple of years. I mean, it is literally the most dangerous country in the world. And they're blaming our Second Amendment for it. Yes, it, it's amazing that they even try to do that. It's such a stupid argument. Now, tell us about the victim. I've met him. He's going to prison. He's tried to contact us, and, and Matt meant, uh, tried to get me to get him on. I do want to get him on. I apologize. I've been so busy. I wanted to research it further, but you've now researched it even further. But let's talk about the victim and what he's facing. Is there any way to help him? Is there an appeals process? Well, yes, he's going to appeal. Uh, I don't put a lot of faith in appeals uh, for certain various legal reasons. But tell folks the name of the victim, then we'll get into that. Well, his name is Paul Copeland. Uh, he, he goes by the um, nickname CB, 56-year-old Vietnam vet. Um, 
Um, he's just, uh, he's you know, lost his job over this. He's um, By the way, he's a, he's a Mason. He wears a Mason necklace, but the Masons aren't helping him. I know like zero about Masons, so. Yeah, no, man, I'm just pointing that out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he, he would lose his home if his son wasn't uh, willing to move in and take over the mortgage payments while he's in the joint. Uh, so it's a sad deal. But really, what, what I want people to under, understand is this could happen to them. And my advice to everyone is, as professional lawyer advice, okay, is based on this case and this prosecution, you don't sell your guns to anyone that you're not absolutely sure is an American citizen. Yeah, this means gun shops. If a Hispanic person comes in with, with, with a suntan and dark hair, and has a Texas driver's license and fills it out, you just can't sell to them. I mean, that, and I don't want to discriminate against Hispanics, but this is what they're doing. Well, that's certainly the import. I mean, that's what they argued to this jury, and this jury gave their stamp of approval. Uh, you know, and, and why is this guy still walking around? It's a very dangerous precedent. Why is this illegal alien, Leon? his name is Leonel Huerta Sr. He's still living in Austin. He's not been deported he is, he got on the witness stand, okay, under oath and admitted in front of a federal judge, federal prosecutors, and various other federal agents in the courtroom and admitted he was in the country illegally and allowed to walk out of the courtroom under his own power, okay? Meanwhile, the Vietnam veterans in prison are about to go to prison. He's about to go to prison, yes. Now, I ask you, who's in a better position in any buy-sell transaction to know if the buyer is an illegal person? Well, that'd be, that'd be the illegal. The that? buyer, right. Okay, so they, uh, they prosecute the seller, though, the citizen. They, didn't they don't prosecute the, the person knowingly lying. But another right. question is, how did he get the driver's license? Because they give them to anybody. I don't know how he got it. I'd like to know. These oh, but there won't be an investigation about that. Yeah, I'm sure that I'm sure we'll have these answers provided to us, <laughs> right? Uh, uh, no, I'm joking. Um, yeah, uh, what, what really bothers me is that it appears that this is an effort by the government, ATF, APD, to create a uh, chilling effect. Yes, to to um, they're using illegal aliens to attack our rights. We have a right to buy and sell firearms amongst each other. It's called the private transfer. We're not dealers. You own guns. You can decide, hey, Velty, you want to buy my gun? And I can, okay, because we're private. Stay citizens. there. This is key. we got to go to break. Folks, they're using illegals to go after the assault weapons nationally, and they're going after your local right to give your grandson a firearm. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Alex Jones. Did you know that the global elite are now storing non-hybrid seeds in secret storage vaults near the Arctic Circle? Did you know that in a real meltdown, non-hybrid seeds can become more valuable than silver or gold? It's true, seeds have outperformed even gold and silver before in this country, and it's possible that it could even happen again. So our friends at Solutions from Science have put together the perfect mix of non-hybrid seeds. They call it a survival seed bank, and it can produce an endless supply of nutrient-dense food for you and your family. And here's the best part. These seeds have not been genetically modified in any way. And you actually get enough seeds to plant a full acre crisis garden. So visit them today at survivalseedbank.com. That's survivalseedbank.com. Or give them a call at 877-327-0365. That's 877-327-0365. Remember, in a real crisis, non-hybrid seeds are the ultimate barter item. This is Alex Jones for survivalseedbank.com. You worry, but only because you're paying